Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Infinite Omega with me, Black Detha. Today, I'm going to be discussing something on the channel, a topic I've never actually covered before, and one that I never really saw myself doing, but, you know, given the dark times that we are currently going through with the very real threat of a virus that's spreading around the globe, you know, we could all use some good news, and while searching the internet, I think I found that good news for all of us. Warriors, come out to play! That's right everyone, this is it. This is the moment, already here. The one that historians will no doubt look back on in the future and say was the defining moment of the decade. But not only that, this will be seen as the crowning achievement of human civilization. By now, I'm sure it's already painfully obvious to most of you what I'm talking about. I mean, how could it be anything else but the joyous news, this bountiful gift that Marvel has given us with the return of their classic and now made much better comic line of The New Warriors. A bold, ambitious project with a dynamic cast of characters that I'm sure will go on to permeate the cultural zeitgeist and redefine what we come to know as entertainment today. But the good news doesn't stop there, as Marvel has also helpfully provided, well actually bestowed upon us, a video to help introduce us to this new cast of characters. And it must be said, the love and support that the fan community has shown for this video, it's just, it's beautiful. People are so happy. In fact, for many, the joy is just unadulterated, with only one question on people's minds. <laughs> Are you serious? Of course, in such tumultuous and uncertain times as we are in right now, it's understandable why people would doubt the validity of such amazing news as this. But allow me to take this opportunity to still your beating heart, because the good news is, it's real. It's true. All of it. That's right, Marvel is actually going ahead with this, and it's not just all some cruel joke. So now as I'm sure I've put your mind at ease, I pose to you a question. Have you not felt that the characters in comics that we had thought we had come to know and love over the past 50 or 60 or more years are not in fact actually problematic? Take for example a character like Captain America. Can it truly be said that he is setting a good and virtuous enough example for the children of today? And don't even get me started on someone like Tony Stark, who has some known character flaws from the get-go that he actually had to work to overcome, or how on occasion he was known to sometimes offend other people, and that sort of thing will not be tolerated in today's world. Now I'm certain that if we all strained ourselves hard enough, that we would all be able to come up with something problematic to say about all the classic so-called superheroes in today's world. But now, I'm just going to stop here for one moment to play devil's advocate. And let's just say hypothetically that there's actually a person out there who's not fully on board with this and actually maybe thinks that this is the most moronic decision Marvel's ever made. <laughs> Obviously you'd have to question that person's sanity, but they may even try and make the misguided argument that our existing classic heroes are already setting an amazing example for everyone in society, citing traits such as learning to overcome adversity, or how these heroes will always fight for justice no matter the cost even if that cost demands personal self-sacrifice. But the response to such arguments is obvious and simple. Stop trying to use logic and reason when the world has obviously decided it wants heroes who will fight for social justice. So it is with great pleasure that I now introduce you to this cast of fit, mostly fit young heroes of the New Warriors. But don't just take my word for it when we can hear from the auteur of this wonderful artistic expression himself, Daniel Kibblesmith. Take it away, Daniel. My name is Daniel Kibblesmith, and I am the writer of New Warriors Number 1. I got interested in the New Warriors later. I remember seeing them on the shelf when I was a kid, picking up comics in the 90s, and just feeling like they were too cool for me. Like I was intimidated by, you know, Night Thrasher who had a blade coming out of his wrist. My god, Daniel. Hearing a man of your means and stature indicate he was intimidated by anything? This is a sobering thought indeed, though it is true. There's little in life that's more intimidating than a fictional character. So, why don't you go ahead and tell us about the ones you've created, Daniel? So, the first character that we're introduced to is Trailblazer. She's a group home and foster kid who is volunteering at a uh, senior center when this mysterious threat shows up and Night Thrasher runs to the rescue. And because she helps him, she ends up uh, in the crosshairs with this new outlawed law. And she inherited from her grandfather a uh, magic backpack 
of Divine Origin. Whoa, okay, I'm gonna stop you right there, Daniel, because you already had me at Backpack and her having one, because I too have been known to wear a backpack on occasion, so I can totally relate to this character already. We picked the name Trailblazer because she's somebody who charges into action. She knows that she can do some good with this you know, mysterious gift that she's been given. And with a magic backpack in tow, I don't see how she could fail. The possibilities are endless. Tell us more, Daniel! Screen time is a internet kid taken to its sort of logical conclusion. As a youth, he was exposed to his grandfather's experimental internet gas. And that has patched him permanently into the World Wide Web. <sighs> no. Yeah, no, that, that makes total sense, Daniel. It's just like when you uh, turn the Wi-Fi onto gas mode and then it connects you to the internet. Yeah, it, that, that checks out. The word screen time is only ever used in a sort of restrictive sense. And because we're doing a story about teenage rebels, uh, a lot of the names are about teens uh, fighting against labels that are put on them. So with screen time, we liked the idea that he has infinite screen time. Simply amazing. My god, Daniel, you're already off to such a strong start. Can you keep it up? Snowflake and Safe Space are the twins, and their names are very similar to Screen Time. It's this idea that these are terms that get thrown around on the internet that they don't see as uh, derogatory to take those words and kind of wear them as badges of honor. I should wear this like a badge of honor. Where is it silence, or I'll honor you again? Safe Space is kind of a big, burly, sort of stereotypical jock. He can create force fields, but he can only trigger them if he's protecting somebody else. See, Daniel, this is why you are a creative force to be reckoned with. Although something tells me that this was probably the easiest character for you to write, Daniel, given that you don't just know a bit about the jock lifestyle, you clearly lived it. And speaking of jocks, I mean, this is something I would have never thought of in a million years. A character with a completely non-offensive power that is left completely defenseless while using their power? Absolutely brilliant! I, for one, cannot see a single way that this could possibly go wrong, and Safe Space surely has a very bright and long future ahead of him. Whoa now there, Tony, don't you be appropriating Safe Space's only move? Snowflake is non-binary and goes by they, them. Okay, I was a little worried you would miss the mark on this one, Daniel, but I'm glad to say you absolutely nailed it. The main thing we need to know when being introduced to a new character is how do they sexually identify? It's writing 101, really. Snowflake has the power to generate individual crystallized snowflake-shaped shurikens. The connotations of the word snowflake in our culture right now are something fragile. And uh, this is a character who is uh, turning it into something sharp. As he threatens your sexuality in his new persona, the Gender Bender. I'm a real toughie. Snowflake is the person who has the more offensive power, and Safe Space is the person who has the more defensive power. The idea was that uh, they would mirror each other and complement each other. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean, Daniel. They certainly do complement each other. Generally, you have to venture to certain hubs to see that kind of complementary behavior. Clearly, Snowflake and Safe Space are very open-minded. E negative is the goth kid. When he was a baby, he got a rogue life-saving blood transfusion, we assume, from Michael Morbius. Truly some next-level writing right there, Daniel when you, as the one writing the origin story, have left even yourself in the dark about some of the details. No doubt we're in for some incredible stories ahead. And now he has a very similar look and very similar vampire powers. B-negative also is obviously a pun. It's a blood type, uh, which is great for a vampire character. And it's also a proud ownership of the idea of having a bad attitude. My god, I wouldn't have thought it possible unless I'd seen it with my own eyes, but Daniel, somehow you and Marvel have done it. You've created the ultimate icons of our age for decades to come. Characters that are already being embraced and beloved by fans the world over. Now at this point, I would be remiss if I didn't touch on the amazing design direction. Because I gotta say, Marvel, it really boggles the mind how you have had decades in some cases with some of these characters to evolve their designs to something that I guess by today's standards we could call at least passable? And yet then you turn around and prove to us it's possible to absolutely nail perfection on the first draft. It's abundantly clear that you brought on the best, most talented artists for this project. Now while I'm certain that in designing these five characters you hoped the artists would bring their A-game, 
So I do have to wonder, how surprised were you when six minutes later they returned with a completed design in its final form, needing no revision whatsoever, that is just a raw expression of pure artistic passion? Again, Marvel Comics, I have to say kudos. These characters will definitely stand the test of time. I want the people who read Our New Warriors to feel all of the excitement that they felt uh, if they read the 90s one. We want it to have big colorful characters, personality clashes, uh, romance, a diverse cast, which is something that the New Warriors titles have always strived to make a priority. Every New Warriors comic has always felt like a reflection of the, the year that it came out. And uh, I don't think we're worried about being dated. I think we're way more interested about it being now. <laughs> oh wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> oh, Daniel, you and Marvel Comics, you don't have to worry about a thing. You've successfully done it. You have created your magnum opus. Something that is so uniquely now that you have taken all fans of all different walks of life and opinions and created a synthesis, one that has caused the fandom to cry out in a single, unified opinion. I simply cannot wait until April 15th. Although, if you want to really have a chance of getting a copy, you better get in line now. The only thing I worry about is whether or not Marvel has had the foresight to print off enough copies for the mad rush at launch. I truly believe that this is a comic that is in it for the long run, and I would not be surprised if we see it make it to two, maybe even three issues in. But I must say, I'm thinking even bigger than that. Just wait until the New Warriors enters into the MCU. If you thought Endgame made a lot of money, well, a New Warriors movie will make it look like an indie film by comparison. This'll just go to prove the phrase. Get woke, and well, you're gonna make a lot of money. I think that's the way it goes. Do I detect a note of sarcasm? Are you kidding me? This baby is off the charts. Why? <laughs> Only sarcasm detection. Well, that's a really useful invention. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please go ahead and leave a like down below, as well as comment on the video. Share it with your friends, and if you haven't already, do subscribe to the channels. I want to bring you a lot more great content in the future, and your support really helps out a lot. For now, though, this is Infinite Omega. I've been Black Detha, and this has just been me talking about Daniel and the rest of the Brain Trust over at Marvel Comics' brilliant decision that will no doubt go down as one of the greatest comics ever made. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. You guys have yourselves an amazing day. Goodbye.